and welcome back to the Cube here, live from the Lake House. We're doing wall-to-wall -wall coverage from Databricks' Data and AI Summit. And I'm so excited to be joined by Jamel Brown from First Orion. Welcome to the Cube. I know it's your first time, and yep. really excited because I, I met you first yesterday at the press briefing, and you just absolutely had such great answers and great information that I think that people who are coming to this summit could really benefit from. And so, why don't we first, what's First Orion about? What All right, well, thank you for the kind words, Rob. Um, yeah, so my name is Jamel Brown, CTO at uh, First Orion. Uh, first Orion, we're all about uh, bringing, um, bringing transparency to the phone call. So uh, we are responsible for scam and fraud, spam protection in the phone call, as well as uh, brand identification uh, for a business to let the caller know who they are. We want people to be able to trust their phone and answer the phones again. Yeah, I, and it was funny because we were all saying that it's so many times I just pushed, you know, sent a voicemail. And I, yep. I love the fact that what you're doing, and I think what was super interesting is that the use case and the amount of data you have to actually go through to identify that the caller is legit is amazing. And can you take us through kind of like, what does that look like from it, you know, because it was like so many per second and how fast it has to happen. Absolutely, so uh, we receive, uh, we, we analyze about 100 billion phone calls annually. Um, for each phone call, right, the number of packets, think about the, if you think about like an email, right, when you see an email, you only see kind of the, the UI, but behind the scenes, there's all this information in this packet. It's the same thing with the phone call, uh, but a little different. Uh, with, with the phone calls, for every one phone call we receive, there's at minimum three packets that we receive that we then have to tie together. So we're talking about, you know, hundreds of, uh, a factor of three at least for each, you know, phone call. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, over 300 billion records that we then have to basically tie together, join, and then we analyze that data. So uh, we source data from a number of different places in addition to the data that we see. And uh, we, we tie all that together and we basically fingerprint each phone call. Uh, by generating this fingerprint, we're able to determine, you know, statistically whether we think this scam, uh, call is a scam or not, or a different type of call. We can tell uh, other, like the category of the call, whether we think it's a, uh, a telemarketing call or a, um, you know, or a, uh, a marketing call or a, a banking call, right? So uh, we have a, a whole host of data that we apply to each individual phone call, and ultimately we have to respond to that phone call within uh, 100 milliseconds. Wow. Yeah, and I think that was the amazing part is that you have to do this at such a rapid pace. And I know that uh, the Databricks folks were saying that you really push them on their technology. Yep. You're really using it. You're always leaning into all of their technology. I Absolutely. mean, we were talking, you, you said you'd use Dolly. Now you're looking at some of the Mosaic ML stuff that's coming down. The, talked about how that journey has gone. Yeah, so Databricks has been a phenomenal partner. Um, you know, like I mentioned in the press briefing, um, I've been familiar with Databricks since 2015. Actually, um, 2015 was my first Spark conference as well. Um, but um, you know, we've we've had a long history together. And at first, Iran, you know, we we hit a point where we weren't really able to scale very well. Uh, and so then we switched over to um, to uh, Databricks, and it's been you know you know a blessing ever since. Uh, we've been able to accomplish a lot of things with a small set of people because we are a small company. Uh, we don't have you know infinite resources to go boil the ocean, and so you know for example you mentioned uh, our Dolly use case. Um, with Dolly, we've been uh, experimenting. We built out an internal kind of um, knowledge base uh, for allowing our engineers to onboard more efficiently. So instead of going out and searching through Confluence, we're now able to uh, to the engineers come on and they can start asking questions of the things that they need, whether it's a product or it's uh, you know, actually setting up their, their machines. Yeah. Uh, this has uh, presented a phenomenal, um, phenomenal degree of uh, efficiency. Uh, you know, we've seen, uh, we did some, some measurements and we've seen over seven and a half times productivity gains uh, to a point where you know, we tried to extrapolate. It's kind of hard to, to ask or answer the question, how much time does someone actually spend looking up inf information during their job, right? Uh, but we got to a point, you know, with a very rudimentary, very conservative estimate of, of around, uh, we were able to we, we were able to generate around nine hundred dollars in savings per employee, um, and so 
that's been that's been a that's been a godsend to help us. And then also we also found you know they talk a lot about uh, these LLMs, these AIs uh, hallucinating or presenting wrong information. And while that's obviously true, there is a component of that. Um, we've also seen situations where an engineer goes out and he has a question about how a product work works. He goes, he looks it up, and even he can be wrong, right? He can derive some in, incorrect assumptions based on the documentation that he's reading. And so, you know, humans are just as likely to be wrong as an LLM is, but, you know, so there's always going to need to be that level of vetting concerns. Uh, but, you know, otherwise it's, it's, it's really helped, helped uh, in our, in our, in our uh, rolling out of this internal project. Yeah, no, I think that, that hits on what uh, Ali was talking about, you know, hey, you have to be able to trust it, you have to be able to, and that, that's been a big theme, and I think when we look at it, it's not only the ethical use of it, it's, it, this is how do you work together? How, uh, you, how does machine and person work together to become, you know, one plus one equals three? And I, I think that's been a big key to what we've been seeing in all of the different events we go to, it's, it's not, about replacing people, it's about making them more efficient exactly. or go faster. Exactly, augmenting, yep. Yeah, and yep. it, have you started to uh, use any of the other stuff out there like Copilot or Git, from Git, or the, how, how deep into AI, like going that direction, have you guys uh, gotten? So our team, we're not using Copilot, we're like a Bitbucket shop, so okay. uh, we're not using Copilot at the moment. Um, uh, we uh, Most of our AI usage is in Either uh, we use AI in uh, some of our scam pre uh, prevention. Yep. Uh, we use some AI in our vetting uh, uh, applications. So we have to vet businesses. Um, this this project that I just referred to, we call it Maestro internally. Um, that's kind of our first internal tool that we're we've developed to help with the the, the employee side of efficiency gains. Yeah. Yeah. That's and I think that's huge. And uh, having been. You know, I was at AWS and I remember getting there and trying to figure out how do I set up my environments? How do I get really going? Yep. How do I know what to do? And this is all during COVID as well. So I think it's, you know, going through and making people more efficient, like you said, I mean, quantifiable to $900 per employee, that's huge. And that was just one use case, right? Yeah. Like, so yeah, we're, we're really excited about what we're seeing early on. Yeah. And you know, Databricks, especially with all the announcements this morning, it's going to get even easier for us to deliver on these things and make yeah. people's lives easier and us ultimately delivering better products. Was there anything that stood out to you, any of the announcements today that stood out to you? Uh, yeah, everything. <laughs> <laughs> but especially the uh, Lakehouse IQ, I think that's going to be a gold mine, especially being able to you know, ask real questions. Hey, what happened to this process? We see that a lot where a job may fail and it's really, you know, it kind of takes someone who really has experience with Spark to be able to dig in and understand at times. Yeah. Now being able to ask these questions or just automatically let us know and then be able to ask further qualifying questions about the issue that happens is going to allow us to make our products much more stable. Yeah, I, I thought it was really neat how you could figure out where it was the data was coming from, yep. how how the failures happened. I thought the, I thought the woman who did the demo did a really great job oh, yeah, with it. Yeah. I thought that was just phenomenal. fantastic. In fact, I, I thought all the demos that were done today on the stage were really uh, deep enough that somebody who's technical could get a little bit out of it, uh, but not too deep that somebody who wasn't overly technical couldn't follow along. Oh yeah, they've they've really mastered that art form. Yeah, yeah, seriously, yeah. Uh, and and it always leads to a lot of extra questions. Like so, I've got my lead architect here, and immediately, you know, as soon as the as soon as the keynote was over, we're sitting in the back of the room, kind of strategizing on who we're going to go seek out and start pinging about, you yeah. know, what they presented and try to get some more information start, out of them. Start to push on getting into the previews exactly, that they announced, Exactly, right? yeah. exactly, exactly. Oh, I think that, that looked like key, I, I was, you know, just based on our, our short conversations yesterday, I started kind of keeping that in the back of my mind when I was watching what they were announcing, mm -hmm. how they were announcing it. They didn't really get into the Lake House apps that much, but I, I think what was neat was, I, I like how they talk about keeping the data private. Yep. And I, I think to me that would seem like a huge thing for you so guys. So huge. Conversely, the apps has been, I mean, right on time because we've been discussing, right, like, all right, we develop an app on the Lake House Marketplace. How do you keep someone from just taking it, reading the source code, or, yeah. you know, for example, notebooks, the data you share, reading the source and just recreating it themselves. You would be essentially open sourcing your proprietary information that would make the business Right, and so them announcing that, further details around it, 
perfect chef, chef's kiss. Yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> chef's kiss. I love that. <laughs> I, I, I look at it and go, it's it to me. It just makes so much sense because your IP is your data. I yep. mean, that's what you do and how you do it. How you you know make sure that it's not a scam and you know get people to trust the phone calls. Yep. I mean, that seems like a very similar message to what. Databricks is bringing from a uh, data perspective exactly. is how do you trust the AI yep. and have transparency? And conversely as well, right? Like, it's an arms race like I discussed yesterday. And so the bad guys are out there using these same technologies. If we were to then give them, right, where they, the app wasn't secure enough or they were able to see, hey, what actual data elements are they using? What can we obfuscate? What we, can we mask to get by, right? We're giving them the blueprint on how to scam people. We don't want to do that. So. You know, again, our goal is to protect people, uh, protect customers, especially the elderly, because they're much oh, yeah. more inclined to fall for these scams, uh, these phone scams, and you know, ultimately, what well, right, bring trust and transparency back to the phone call. Yeah, and I, I think I, that's so key is the, the trust and transparency. And we were even talking and chatting about how they're even using the AI voice enablement. They're getting like you were talking about uh, yesterday. They get they went from having the first six digits of the number right to having my child's phone number or yep, something like yep. that, and a voice of and that. And a voice somehow, right? Yeah, and it's it's crazy. And I think that's uh, one of the things that I'm really excited about what you're doing, what how you're doing it with, and again, I asked the question in the press briefing, uh, how much, you know, how did you get started? And you kind of went through that, and then uh, what percentage was on Databricks? And you were, I believe, said 100%. 100%, yeah, yep. Which is awesome, and I, I think that's, they should be very excited about that, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So you're they, a good portion of that two exabytes a day of processing oh yeah, that oh yeah. Ollie was uh, talking about. For sure, so, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Arsalan mentioned yesterday, hey, who is this first Orion company in my internal reports? They're using every the top of every single category of all these SKUs, right? Yeah. Yeah, we've always tried to push, because we have to, right? We have to try to keep up uh, and keep protecting people, so. I love it, I love it. Well, I want to thank you for coming on board. I really appreciate it. I mean, I've, you're, you're fantastic and such a wealth of knowledge and I know the people who are out watching, we actually have a lot of app developers and data developers that watch the show pretty religiously and I okay. think getting your view on what's going on with Databricks has been fantastic. So I really want to appreciate it. Absolutely. Say thank you, thank you for having me. Yes, wow. thank you. And thank you for watching and we're the Cube. We're actually taking the signal out of the noise and presenting it to you to give you what's going on here live from the Databricks Lake House and the Data and AI Summit. We'll be back shortly with our next guest.